Please join me in welcoming Tom Carberry. This is quite the crowd for a young guy from Dauphin, <laughs> and I mean young. Um, just before I start, you've got about two seconds to get in on the pool with my family that I uh, won't get through all of this without choking up. It only costs you about 10 bucks. Profits go to the Alzheimer's Society. <laughs> Thank you all for coming tonight and supporting the Society and its efforts to improve the life of all Manitobans living with dementia. The Alzheimer's Society of Manitoba offers many services and programs that our family have taken advantage of over the last few years. The support groups and the education sessions, especially the telehealth sessions in rural Manitoba, have all been very helpful. And I've been pleased to see that the telehealth sessions have moved from the 19 communities when I started attending to over 44 now. I was honored to be asked to speak this evening, honored that I have been provided with an opportunity to tell our story, and in doing so, honor my wife and her spirit. However, it's not just our story. It's a story that belongs to my family, to my four children, as well as all of our extended family. I hope that in my brief comments, I show respect for the fact that it is a journey many of us are traveling. In the limited time I've been allotted, and Kim told me I had to stay within five minutes, which I've never done in my life, uh, I hope I pull the curtain aside to allow you a brief glimpse at family life living with dementia. My wife's name is Fran. She's been traveling this journey with her family and friends for pretty close to 17 years now. Words and phrases I never really understood before, like closed head trauma, acquired brain injury, vascular dementia, frontal temporal lobe dementia, Pick's disease, and Alzheimer's disease, all began, to, all began to shape our life together. It is our belief that this journey started following a severe single vehicle crash on the Trans-Canada near the Carmen turnoff in November of 1998. Since that accident, we have evolved through four different diagnoses, multiple healthcare professionals, a 17-year struggle with MPI, related to the link between closed head trauma and early onset Alzheimer's disease, and have arrived at a point where we do not now live together, but we are still very much together. During that time, many lessons have been learned. The experience of loss through such a journey is ambiguous at best. The situation has been very fluid, and closure on any one part of our life or our experiences together has been virtually impossible. Grief cannot follow a direct route. Too many ups and downs, celebrations with perceived improvement, and disappointment with deterioration, and the consequential adjustments to a new daily routine result in a roller coaster ride of emotions that is flung at us with very little time for processing. Fran now lives in a personal care home. She entered care from the hospital after a series of events in the first part of 2013. For many years, Fran was able to work, able to work with employer accommodations, engage in a social life, go camping, Ski trail, ski trail grooming with me, ice fishing, and maintain social relationships. In 2008, she could no longer continue in her employment. By 2011, her need for supervision resulted in my retirement at least a year earlier than I had expected, 
And by the summer of 2012, it was increasingly evident that things were not getting better and resulted in a couple of incidents where I needed to involve the police and EMS to settle Fran down. Even during this period, we camped and rode the snowmobile. Although looking back on that now, it's not something I would suggest to anybody. There's stories I could tell you. In the middle of Riding Mountain National Park, stuck on a snowmobile with somebody with dementia. We started out as high school sweethearts. It just took three years after high school for Fran to realize that. <laughs> and over 40 years later, we're still together. Fran has ways of letting me know she's still here. It may be the arch of her eyebrow, a condemning look, or even getting out and out heck, although her language is much more colorful now. I visit her every day for the most part. I feed her. We go for a walk afterwards. I need to use a transfer belt as her balance is very poor, otherwise she's pretty much wheelchair bound. We often tell each other, I love you, something she was always very good at. Me, not so much. I guess I'm a guy. I'm not so presumptuous as to tell you what to do or how to live with your loved one, but I will leave you with a few points that I've learned along the way. Expect the unexpected. Whenever you think things are going down one path, for sure the other path will be taken. Be patient and flexible. There is no way you can control the situation, and trying to will drive you nuts. So be patient with your loved one and ready to adapt at a moment's notice. Fighting things are not worth the effort and waste val valuable time together. I learned this one the hard way. Just have to ask my kids. They're all over here. They're still here. Look for your loved one always. They will show themselves to you in ways you may never have noticed before. They will also show you parts of yourself you may never have seen before. And live your life. You still have a life to live. Get on with it. Your loved one expects this as much as she or he might have before the onset of the disease. Have fun, laugh, both with your loved one and your friends. You all deserve it. Live in the moment. In the end, it is really all we have. By living in the moment, you will free yourself up to enjoy what's in front of you and it will allow you to still be together, even if the world has changed. Advocate always. You are your loved one's voice. Use it. There are no wrong questions. There's lots of them, for sure. And remember, the challenge is still here to create inclusive and dementia-sensitive communities that are person-centered and family-focused. The challenge is still here to balance our limited resources between the highly specialized services that are required, the research into cause and prevention, and the early intervention strategies that all protect the quality of life we all seek. Thank you for this opportunity tonight. I hope these brief words provide some insight for you, but most importantly, leave you with a sense of hope that life does not end with the onset of dementia, not for the person afflicted, nor for the family, because we are all still here. Thank you very much. It's Tom Carberry, ladies and gentlemen, speaking of his lovely wife, Fran.